Hey everyone, it's Elliot, and it's also time to graphic design. And that is the intro that I'm gonna use for this video. What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome to Design with Elliot, a new series uh, on the channel. Even though I've only made one video before, I'm gonna kickstart the channel with a series. We're gonna right into it. Uh, where essentially I will take you through my process of how I design stuff for my Instagram page or just any other thing that kind of pops up. Um, I really like designing, uh, which is why I design. And I think it's a lot of fun to kind of talk about my process as I do it. I do it a lot of my Twitch streams, uh, but I also get really distracted on those streams. So I thought I'd do a more condensed version of that where I can actually focus and not get distracted and actually get something done for once rather than just, you know, uh, scroll for a while and then get sent a video and just watch a video as a, you know, we can actually do something on these videos, which is a really good opportunity for me to, to do something. So that's what these videos are gonna be. For those who don't know me, since I'm still early days of YouTube, uh, my name is Elliot, also known as Elliot is a cool guy on Instagram. Uh, and I post funny graphic design. Some people like to think they're graphic design memes designed well, but I like to think that they're an honest, um, uh, an honest, an honest interpret, an honest ex expression of the creative experience. Thank you. And today we're gonna to be making a post for that page. So I have a pretty specific process for when I do these. Uh, nothing too fancy, nothing too amazing. Uh, and I do it all on Photoshop, by the way. So if, you, if you're like, oh my God, Elliot, Elliot, how do you not know Illustrator? You know, you've, you've been doing graphic design for a while. You know, how do you not know Illustrator? You should really know Illustrator. I should. No one's denying that. But I'm gonna do everything on Photoshop today and, and that's gonna be a little bit of fun. So let's get right into the video. Let's start get designing, start thinking about what works on social media to post, what it's like to have a career, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk all about it in this video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So come with me and join the, and design along with me. And just before we get into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Your subscription goes so much further than you think it does. Can we hit 1000 subscribers by the end of me filming this video? You tell me. Uh, also, feel free to hit that notification bell, which will give you a little notification every time I post. That's pretty fun. And also, smash that like button because you like the video if you're watching it this far, right? Right? Okay, let's get it. Let's do some design. Okay, so I've actually been working on something for the last half an hour or so. Um, I'm quite proud of it, uh, and I, I, I want to show you it. So here it is here. Uh, yes, I haven't done anything. The best way that I find to get out of creative block this is a bit of a weird thing. I don't know how many people feel the same, uh, but especially when it comes to the wording of the post, right? I actually like to go back and look at some of my old work. So this here is my Instagram page. Most of you will have come from here anyway. Um, and maybe you've seen my work around. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. These posts get a lot of reach. They, they do well, they do do well. I like to have a, a quick little glance through my work just to get a general idea of what I find is still funny or what I like. Um, Cause I think the easiest way to experiment and kind of to take your work to the next level and to constantly improve is to take something that you really enjoyed doing or really liked looking at or thought was funny uh, and then take that a further step. My most recent post at this state um, is this one here, which was based off a, a tweet actually that I found. Um, and if we have a look at just the, uh, I feel like I just hadn't really done anything like this in a while. A lot of my stuff was quite basic and text-based for a long time. Um, and this one, I just really, I had a lot of fun with this one. I actually made it live on uh, the Patreon live streams that my patrons get access to, but we'll talk more about that later. I'm just gonna have a think for a little bit and we'll come back to me in about, you know, whenever I come up with something and yeah, good luck, Elliot. So I think for this post, I'm gonna go with uh, my business card template, which is something that I've been doing for quite a while. But recently uh, I've kind of been dancing back and forth between my love for business cards and, and full poster dimensions, I guess. So we're using a 4,000 by 5,000 pixel document here, by the way. I don't know why I use it. I mean, it's, it's very high resolution 
for an Instagram post that it gets compressed down to 1080p. Uh, but I find that it looks the best when uploading and it makes the colors as bold as possible or something like that. It just seems to work. Uh, and it, it also kind of doesn't look as pixelated as the 1080p by 1350 that some people do. Uh, so I use just a full size document. I even save it at maximum quality most of the time. Uh, and it just seems to work. So. If, if anyone's curious. I usually start with my business card uh, with a with the text block like I've done here. I might just quickly space out if my text uh, command would work like that. Um, and I just tab uh, text like that to kind of move my paragraphs around. I really like working with spaces in the text. A lot of people think that's against the rules or whatever. I don't care. It looks cool, whatever. Um, I'll also add a, a cheeky little stroke on the outside as well, just to make it a little bit bolder as I think that's pretty cute like that. Very nice. And I also thought of a tagline that could go along with it just underneath, uh, which is just simply, uh, it's not even that good, lol. Uh, I think this would be nice to kind of once again, bait out some of those people, those real Helvetica lovers in the in the comments. Uh, so we'll, we'll just type that out really quickly. It's not even that good, lol. And I think in a nice like either, maybe even a Times New Roman italic or script font possibly. We'll play around with it and we'll, we'll we'll see what we kind of get, but we'll, we'll keep it just here as, as a cheeky little tagline and make sure that tracking is nice and close. And there we go. We've got kind of two nice fonts that, that fit quite well together. When I also make posts like this, I, I want to kind of have some sort of feature image of some sort, whether that be a big shape or a gradient orb or something like that. Um, but sometimes as well, the text can kind of take the lead on a post. Uh, and I, I don't really know which one this is, so... We'll kind of see as we go along, who knows. So I ended up settling with Brush Script as the font to go with this little tagline. Cheeky little font for a cheeky little tag. Uh, you can get that one on Adobe Fonts, it's a true classic. Um, we're gonna start filling in some of this empty space here. We wanna populate the card in one way or another. Uh, this big gap in between I reckon and I could, I think is, is prime real estate to be filled with something. Uh, and what we're gonna have a crack with is my, my 11 star polygon that I love to use. What's interesting about this shape as well, by the way, if we just actually make it visible real quick, um, is that Photoshop doesn't like this shape. Photoshop hates this shape. It's really weird. Happened in a recent update. I think it was the 2021 CC update or something like that. Um, where essentially now you can make the shape, sure, but as soon as you move it, uh, well, that's awkward. Didn't work the way I wanted. As soon as you transform it, there we go. As soon as you transform it, uh, it'll actually go from those, those curved edges to sharp ones. Why does it do this? I have no idea. But as long as they let me just do this original shape, just like that, and I can rasterize it, then I'm happy. Yeah, doesn't concern me too much. Uh, and yes, I'm sure there's a way to do it on Illustrator. I reckon most of you, if you're watching this far, though, you're probably not that concerned. So, hey, thanks for sticking around. So now that we've got that shape kind of slotted in just here, uh, we can start filling in this kind of outer area a little bit more. Um, what I'll do is I've, I've got an idea for a big kind of rounded rectangle almost that'll be warped a little bit and kind of blended around. Um, so we're going to give that a quick try. Um, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of all these for a second and I'll just start working on a, the background. We just make a nice rounded rectangle here. Curve the edges a little bit. Just fill it in something simple, maybe like a 10 pixel. Stroke on it as well. I'm gonna duplicate that layer underneath it, move it a little bit behind it and fill that in black. So we have a kind of a nice drop shadow. I mean, this is already like, you know, you could frame this, put it in a gallery. This is an NFT right here, honestly. Um, we're gonna rasterize both of these rectangles. Uh, then we are going to merge them. I'm gonna duplicate the layer just in case I decide to come back to the original. Um, and what we can do really quickly, go into edit, transform, warp, and just like we did in that gradient orb tutorial that you might've seen, uh, we're just gonna play around with this shape really quickly. And we're just experimenting really quickly just to see if anything kind of catches our eye. Something like that, right? That's pretty cool. I kind of like this. Keyword there is kind of. I'm not obsessed with it yet and that's worrying me. So let's try and chuck it into the actual design. We'll add all those shapes back. Um, and since it's the same color as the background, we're getting some pretty cool kind of, uh, it looks like it's just a line, right? Rather than that, that full on um, shape that we had with, without that, like this filled in shape, right? 
And I like it just as a line. So if we do uh, darker color, I believe, as a blending mode, um, we can see through it now and we can see this polygon hidden underneath. Um, so we get some cool kind of strokey lines going on, um, which we, we might explore further. Once again, we're just kind of giving it a crack as we go. I'm not really too settled on anything just yet. Um, and we might do a cheeky little time lapse here as I, as I come up with some ideas and, and we'll see if we can come up with anything. Okay, so now it feels like we're kind of getting somewhere. I changed it up a little bit. I made the text a bit bigger, a bit bolder, so it will kind of strike more and catch the reader's attention a little bit more than what it was doing before. Uh, and I really like the structure of this block of text here, right? Um, it feels very even, it feels very structured, it feels cool and exciting rather than the block that we had before. Um, we've also got these big gaps once again in the text, which like I said, I don't mind at all. Uh, and if one was to read it in the, the way I don't want them to read, which would be like, I reckon I could make a font Helvetica better or something like that. It would, it would still kind of work. Like I reckon I could make a font better than Helvetica. I reckon I could make a better font than Helvetica. Like there's, there's different ways of reading it. And I think that's kind of cool as well. Um, I also have done this thing recently where I take the business card and I add a little chunk just at the bottom on an angle. And I really like that and I wanted to do it again. Um, so I, I chucked it in down here at the bottom. What we'll do as well to fill up parts of the text, um, I like to just include uh, my handle, not to self promo or anything like that, um, but literally just to fill space because I think it, it looks better, right? Um, I find that the little details of designs like this are, are so, so, mwah, you know, they're so nice. So we'll, we'll just add it in a little bit there. Add the stroke just on a new Montreal, Noya Montreal, not new, Noya, um, a Noya Montreal regular. Uh, shrink that even a little bit more and just increase the tracking to about 25 maybe. There we go. And we can fill it in there. Um, I don't know why. I just do this on every single post now and it makes it look so much cleaner in my opinion. We can also chuck in a little secondary joke maybe on this side here at the top uh, to contrast that one. Um, oh, and we could also go along with this A potentially and have it like kind of you know, slanting down, I guess. Um, and I could, it could say something like, like I said, with the main posters, I reckon I could make a better font than Helvetica. It's not even that good. Bingo. Um, obviously, I couldn't. Actually, yes, I could. Try me. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> We're, we're just having a laugh uh, with, with these little with these little secondary texts. Um, so we'll make that one once again, a little bit all over the place uh, in terms of where the lines fall, which I think looks nice. Gives it a bit of energy, you know. I think that's a big thing to consider when it comes to typography and text in a design, right? We don't want it to be all boring, you know, flat, a line left kind of thing. I want it to be exciting and, and awkward and funny to read in a way, and accenting certain words, um, accenting certain words. Haven't read a book in a while. So yeah, this is looking good right now. I, I really do like this. We'll change this little bit once again. We'll just make this creep up a little bit more, I think, and we might increase the size of this as well. Um, what we'll do too, I think, uh, we might, what, how does that look down there in the middle? That looks a little bit cleaner. I'm just thinking maybe if we shrink the rectangle itself, um, we can get a bit of a cleaner cut on it rather than all this empty, empty space. There we go. Something more like that. That's nice. See, I like how that kind of wraps around on a border. And what we can give a crack as well is if we, if we do another one of these, on the top. I'm just wondering if we could chuck in my my cheeky little symbol just poking out in the corner there. Uh, just just here, a little one, just a little one. Nothing too fancy. Uh, 
create a little one, just rasterize it to maintain the integrity of the shape because Photoshop hates it. And we'll, we'll just pop it up there. That kind of looks pretty cool. I, th I think, I think it looks cool. We'll, we'll keep this one, uh, this will, this is an idea. We've, we've come up with an idea. Hey, how about we stick with that? We've come up, this is definitely an idea. I've definitely done something here. But that's that's all that's that's all I'm gonna say about it. Um, now I want to add some uh, other kind of pizzazz in between. I don't really want to fill up these spaces as I like the negative space that I've created here. Uh, but I think around the edges of the design and the corners especially, we can do a little bit of magic. So I might pull up some one of those uh, a rectangle like this that I did before and turned it into an actual circle saved to my uh, CC library, would you believe? Um, and we'll just pull that into the design and we're gonna see if we can make anything with this here, if we kind of like warp it almost around the edge of the design. Uh, and I think we might be onto something. And once again, at the same time, I have absolutely no idea. Okay, so I erased a bit of it. I, I kind of like it, I, I, but I mainly don't. So we're just gonna delete that. It was fun, and a, a fun attempt. Um, so yeah, I think that the text block on its own is quite crisp and quite clean. But what I might want to do is add some sort of gradient thing going on behind the actual card itself. Uh, what we'll do too, I think, is just shrink the edges of this business card template a little bit more, um, just so we can kind of creep it in a little bit. Rather than just accepting like that little bit of negative space on the end, we can really fill in that design. Uh, and we, I think we're getting to something. I really think we are getting to something. It's very easy to say, but I think I think we are. Good job, team. Keep it up. Um, so here we go. This is kind of our, our main design. I think I'm gonna get rid of this thing here. I think it's not doing it for me. It feels awkward, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, so we'll get rid of the rectangle, but we'll keep the shape. We shall keep the shape and we might just pop it in um, in the middle here and it's all, all of its pixelated rasterized goodness. Uh, and boom, that looks that looks amazing to me. So uh, there we go. And, 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 I'm, and I'm really enjoying that. So that's a nice design I find right now. I'm really kind of settled and happy with this structure. And I think the next thing to do is kind of add something in the background that could be pretty spicy. So let me have a quick think. And I'm also gonna take a quick break because it's important to take breaks because as creatives, we don't take breaks as often as we should. Uh, and my 25 minute timer on my Pomodoro has ticked off, which means I get five minutes of rest and relaxation. So grab a drink, stand up, get outside, do whatever you want if you're working along. And what I'm gonna do actually uh, is show you uh, someone who I've been inspired by recently. And maybe this will be a tradition in every one of the videos. Maybe I'll, you know, show some work that I find found, found to be quite inspiring recently. I think that would be nice. What do you think? Do you think it would be nice? Uh, so Angela Kirkwood is an account that I found only the other week and I've been absolutely adoring recently. Um, the thing that struck me mainly was this watermelon cat on a Siggy break, which I think is a necessary buy, to be honest, and I will be buying this very soon uh, from all the ad revenue that this video makes, um, but this is just sick. All of these illustrations and, and just, I, I, I love it all, and I think uh, even as just a graphic designer, right, you can take a lot of inspiration from work like this and just compositional things and shapes and colours, and it's just beautiful, nice stuff, so this is... Angela Kirkwood, who I've been inspired by heap recently. Let's get back to it. So I've got an idea in my head of what I want to do kind of in the background of this image. Um, I like the white border and I was playing around before with just like chucking a gradient on, for example, or even putting it in like a, uh, putting it in a circle, uh, which does look pretty cool, but I want to do something cooler that doesn't also involve gradients because I feel like I, do too many gradients, so we're gonna delete those layers. Uh, and I'm just gonna grab some brushes, some hard brushes this time, rather than soft brushes. Um, and we're just gonna create some layers underneath this card. I've just come some kind of, just some some thick shapes, almost, just some nice, 
thick shapes. And we'll use the, the classic Elliott colors, which is the red, blue, and yellow. Uh, and, and we're not really aiming for anything specific. Um, I just want to get a kind of a sense of how this looks. <laughs> it looks. It looks interesting right now. And I think there's potential here. So bear with me, everyone. This I actually think this is a lot of potential. So I'm just going to start warping these around and we'll see how the things go. Okay, I think this is looking pretty cool. I trusted myself and I backed myself and I said, screw you viewers who didn't believe in me. Uh, I made something cool. Uh, and I actually think this looks pretty sick. I think there's one final thing that I want to do as a little finishing touch. And that's just some light kind of uh, almost like black stroke lines going across it all. Uh, so we're just going to make a really small brush here. Uh, even a little bit, a little bit smaller than that. Something like this, right? And I just want to kind of scribble over the top of everything even, so it kind of goes across uh, like the background itself, uh, the card itself rather, rather than just like the background. And if we kind of just really quickly, I mean, look, if like Wacom sponsored the channel or something like that, I would be able to do this so much easier than using my mouse. Uh, just hint, hint, that'd be pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to kind of use some mouse drawings really quickly uh, just to get an, a, a, some sort of sense of like some scribbly kind of nature. Because I, I like the idea of this being almost like a like an artist's palette in a way. It kind of gives me that vibe and I think that's pretty sick. Um, so yeah, if we just select this one, it's almost nose shape. Uh, we can just bring it up a little bit there. And then, yeah, I think that's looking pretty cool. It feels a little bit uneven. I think the, the bottom right here is a little bit empty. So maybe if we just add another scribble, perhaps we should be able to clear that up. Even if we just, even if it's just a little one like, like that, for example. There we go. That's already looking much more even. Uh, and there we go. We kind of have a, what I think is a finished design, potentially. It's very different to what I usually do, but also very cool. And I think this, this, this color block background that I did today, uh, I will most definitely be using that in the future because I adore it. Uh, so our final touches that we will do um, is what I like is just merging all the existing layers uh, or my unnamed layers, my sweet, sweet unnamed layers, because honestly, I will stop, gra listen, mark these words. I will stop graphic designing the day I start naming my layers and no one can change that. All right, final touch. Merged all the layers together. Go to noise. A Little bit of blur, I think, maybe for this one, like a little, like a 2% blur, like nothing at all. Filter, noise, add noise, and then I'm gonna pack it with a little bit of noise. Pack it like 10% noise, of Gaussian monochromatic noise. Pack it just like that. We might even adjust the levels really quickly. Almost to just sharpen out the image a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, a little bit in between, something like that. And I think, I think we have a post. Wow. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule that post using Facebook Creator Studio's Instagram integration. Uh, if you have a post on Instagram, I can highly recommend scheduling your post. It, it will take so much time and stress out of your life. It is the, the best thing ever. 
Um, I'm gonna go schedule that post for the day that this video comes out, which is really exciting. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed me watching, if you hopefully enjoyed me making the design, because I did myself. And I think I came up with something new and exciting, which was fun. I don't usually get to do that. So uh, it's nice to have an audience to observe uh, and bounce back on, you know? It's good fun. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for videos that you wanna see in the future. Uh, if you wanna get access to these videos a week earlier than they come out, as well as a heap of other benefits, then you can subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, we've got a lovely community over there. They really are the sweetest people and all of them are right here. Uh, you can get like wallpapers, uh, custom designs, merch even, uh, HD files for you to print out at home, a heap of stuff, a Discord community. Honestly, the benefits are, they're just endless. They're absolutely endless. Uh, and even live streams are included in that. So feel free to check out my Patreon. Uh, and check out all my socials as well. Uh, promo, 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 Twitter, Instagram, TikTok now, everything. And also as a final thing, as a final thing, if you, if you like this style of video, me sitting here designing design with Elliot, then you'll love my Twitch stream where I design a heap more stuff live and I even make designs for the people in the chat as I stream. And it's just a lot of fun, put a lot of effort into that stream. The viewers are the ones who convinced me to start a YouTube channel that it's just the best people. It's a lovely community. So pop in and say hi. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. Feel free to smash a like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you for the next video, which will be coming out very soon. Big bless to you all. Uh, thank you so much for the support on the last video as well. And I hope to see you very soon. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>